Hi and welcome to our today demo which is about OpenSwitch. Uh, OpenSwitch is a network operating system which can be installed and deployed on bare metal or disaggregated network switches. Uh, it has a hardware compatible list. It is not compatible with all the switches. Uh, it is compatible with certain uh, type of switches which are uh, listed in the OpenSwitch HCL. Mostly they are Dell EMC and also some type of uh, H-Core switches are also supported to run the uh, OpenSwitch network operating system. Um, OpenSwitch, I think it was started a few years ago. Uh, mainly, I think it was with participation with uh, HP. And during that time, the, the initial generation of OpenSwitch was mainly it was based on some kind of traditional uh, network operating system. So when you you know, you could install that operating system on the network switch, like, you know, one of these, you know, bare metal switch. But after the boot up of the switch, you could see uh, a very familiar user interface, like a uh, CLI uh, of uh, industry standard CLI, you know, with, with commands like config T, config terminal, or doing the IP configuration, or, you know, everything through one single CLI. That that was, you know, the approach, the initial approach of the, uh, of the open switch. I think, uh, I don't know exactly when it happened, but a revolution completely happened to OpenSwitch and they made it very, very, very wide and flexible. So the approach got changed. Uh, they started build, rebuilding the uh, OpenSwitch with OPX, uh, I think with, with mainly uh, some development uh, resources from, uh, from other uh, participators within the project. Uh, I think a lot, a lot of efforts also from Dell EMC. And the new operating system is you know, you know, it's just uh, it's it's a Debian Linux based on the based on the Debian Linux, and it includes the switch abstraction interface and other networking uh, services and APIs. And each piece of software, each piece of uh, routing or bridging, they are all running as a separate piece within this operating system. So it's a complete modular kind of operating system, you know, designed and built for for disaggregated network switches. If you are familiar with uh, with Cumulus Linux, you know, to me, you know, they they use the same type of approach. So Cumulus Linux also is based on, you know, one pure Linux based operating system with additional components of the routing, switching and other uh, other piece of softwares. Uh, in OPX also you see uh, the same uh, kind of method, but uh, in general, I think you know, Cumulus is more mature right now. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, software, uh, so let's have a look. Let's start with how we can do a demo with uh, with OpenSwitch. So if, it, if we browse to OpenSwitch.net, uh, from here we can start from the wiki page. So if I click on the start from wiki, um, here it gives us some information, and, and also there is an option here to run the OPX in a virtual machine, which is which is good, and you know everyone can do. A touch base with with OPX from here. So let's try with doing it with uh, with the virtual machine. So the virtual environment for for OPX, the one which has been created and provided by by the OP, by OpenSwitch folks, is is a virtual machine which is executing a Dell S6000 ON device. S6000 is a is a 32 port 40 gigabit per second uh, switch. Uh, so 32 port, 40 port, 40 gig ports. Uh, it's, it's a switch. So it's a virtual machine which uh, which simulates actually the same uh, same hardware. So to run this, uh, you know, you can run it on any platform. You know, it supports Windows and uh, Mac and as well as uh, Linux. Uh, we just need a virtual box. So I have downloaded and installed already uh, virtual box. I have the latest version of the virtual box running on my machine and. Uh, to install that, uh, either we can use the tools uh, like LVM or VM.exe, uh, which is for creating this uh, the virtual environment of uh, of OPX. But there is a um, simple way for doing that. You know, you can use Vagrant as well. So if we go to uh, here, the OPX releases are available on Vagrant. So let's try and access this through the Vagrant. So in Vagrant, I will search here. I will choose VirtualBox as my platform and I will search OPX. And here, these are all the official versions. And the latest version which is available here is the version 3. 
zero zero so this one and to install and deploy this you just need to have vagrant installed on your machine and that's it you know this is all we need to do so i will copy these commands vagrant in it opx slash 300 box version 300 and vagrant up uh, let me open a command from here and if i put this command here and here we go uh, the vagrant will start downloading the um, the the OPX from the Vagrant Cloud and so what will happen is you know some someone from from OPX they have already created these virtual machines they have uploaded this to the Vagrant and with this command I download that that image from the Vagrant and it loads it on my uh, virtual box so let me uh, accelerate this part and after this you will see my uh, virtual box will have a new virtual machine called uh, OPX okay so now you can see a new virtual machine has been created here and it's running and if i click here on the show here now i get the the console of opx 300 vm login uh, the default username is admin and default password is also admin so now we got the shell access to the to our new opx open switch box so the first thing I would do is to to bring up a management interface and we set up uh, an SSH access because using this console is really uh, painful so first let's see uh, how what is the network connectivity to this virtual machine quickly uh, so here in my host network manager I have a virtual box network virtual network uh, within this host which is in this network 192.156.56.1 and my host is also running a DHCP server so I need to make sure whatever interface I'm connecting to this uh, virtual machine to our OPX it's connected to the VBox net so let's check what's going on here so this is the configuration of this virtual machine we go to network and so we got the network adapter and that's network adapter is connected to NAT I want to change that to uh, not internal host only network and VBox net zero which is the one which we have there and here we go okay so now uh, it's connected to the correct network interface let me do an IF config here uh, to see what are the interfaces uh, if you have to do it sudo admin okay so we got Ethernet 0 which has 10.0.2.15 IP address which I think is not correct let me change the we set a static IP also on that interface. So a slash. So this is a Debian in, uh, machine. So we can use the slash etc network interfaces for changing the uh, Ethernet zero. So Ethernet zero is on a DSP. We say static, and we say address uh, 192.168.86. Dot, let's say 10. Uh, net mask should be. 255.255.255.0 and gateway is 192.168.50.86 yeah, so it is 56.1 and I will change this also back to 56 uh, this line actually is not required so I mark that and we save this file and exit uh, let me do again a networking restart uh, let me flush this IP address maybe flush return at zero and let's do networking restart okay so I got the correct IP address now and the interface now let's try to uh, to do the SSH to this machine so from our shell from from our console here so we do SSH as admin at 192.168.56.10 yes. and 
I should ask her for the password. Yeah, so now we got the SSH access. So we don't need the, sh uh, the console anymore. So we are free, finally. Okay, so now uh, we got the shell access to the to the OPX. So this is like a, uh, imagine that you know the, we we got the switch, one of these S six thousand Dell switches, and this is the login access to the to this device. So let's start doing some uh, some practice and see. So as you see, this is a Linux shell. So one important thing which you should know is that uh, whatever we do here in this shell uh specific commands they will get translated and injected inside the switch asic hardware that chipset so changing uh creating removing vlans enabling or disabling spanning tree here you know running the routing protocol modifying the routing table will have an impact that switch uh, abstraction interface or those drivers that that are loading inside this virtual machine not exactly on this virtual machine but in the real open switch it always monitors that for example the routing table or whenever we add any commands for adding removing the vlans and stuff they they take those output and they inject them as as specific api calls to the uh to the switch chipset so all of them will get so whatever we do here it gets injected inside the switch silicon so this is like a user interface to the switch silicon that we have okay let me go back to the to the website of opx um uh, in the opx uh we can start also if you look at the the software downloads here um so we downloaded actually the, the Vagrant file, that VM part, but uh, he, here there are different installers. So if we go for, for example, version 3.1.0, uh, these are the installers. So this is the Dell EMC uh, installers for 3.1.0, this is the version. And, you know, there are different versions uh, also available. You know, it has also uh, available some available versions for, for H-Core as well. So for example, version 2.1.0, it supports Dell EMC switches. Also, it it's, it supports uh, specific switches from from H core. I think AS seventy two seventy five twelve probably. Don't remember exactly. Uh, mm, now here in uh, and they got also documentation here. So let's say for example in three zero zero, we got documentation, the administration guide. Uh, you can see configuration guide, development guide, and installation guide. So you know it's it's a pretty much uh, fine documentation. Um, you know, uh, it 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 will help you. You know to understand how the how the open switch works. So these are the documentation of the of the switch. Now let's go back and do some basic uh, uh, commands with open switch and see how it works. All right, so let's start with looking at the physical ports. So uh, if we go in slash etc. There is a folder called opx, and here we got uh, these are most of the configuration files of opx, which are all located here. And this file here, this XML file, base port physical mapping. This one it explains the uh, the mapping of the these logical ports here in the operating system to the real physical ports in the switch so if i let's do an anno of this space port so this xml file as you can see uh here there are these this uh, we have this tags front panel port number so port number one is called e101-001-0 so this particular port, this particular name is a logical name in the operating system here that we can deal with. So port number one actually is, is named as uh, this name and it's connected to one, two, three, four, these four hardware ports. Actually, these four hardware ports, they are all one. Uh, so this switch, as you remember, you know, it's a S6000 uh, switch, which is a 32 port, 40 gigabit per second switch. So each port is a 40 gig port. So if you if you use it in this model, so this this one, you know, the port number E101-001, it is it, it becomes a 40 gigabit per second port. We can divide this port into four 
10 gig ports so that is in in uh, it, there are some breakout cables that you can use and you can break a four a 40 gigabit per second port into four 10 gigabit per second port so this is for that you know it's a kind of fan out so you can use this configuration if we can we can divide this you know to have you know one one single port and one only one single hardware port you know port number 25 so we can divide the 40 gigabit per second port into four uh 10 gigabit per second port um <clears throat> So this is how the mapping is, is happening. So each each port number, actually, these are all logical port numbers that we, we can deal with. Uh, so we will use these port numbers when we are creating uh, VLAN interfaces or, you know, assigning, you know, IP address to these interfaces. But this is how the mapping between the hardware ports and the, uh, and the ports here in the operating system works. Um, let's have a look at the, the processes running as OPX. Uh, uh let's only filter the opx process so so we got the uh, opx cps services the uh, paa services nas daemon services these are all services running uh from uh from the opx in the machine so the, each service has different uh you know different uh functions uh even if you do system ctl uh, europe uh, opx these are all the services you know uh, loaded from the OPX. Okay, to to manage the OPX itself, we got some OPX uh, commands, which are starting with OPX dash. Uh, so let's say OPX uh, show environment. So if I show environment, uh, I think I have to do it with sudo. So this command shows us the situation, status of the switch. You know, the operation status of the chassis failed uh, because you know this is a virtual machine so it's not able to get the real information and these are just uh, virtualized uh, the power supplies the fans so we got four fans and the temperature sensors uh, let's see the other uh, the other commands like uh, opx show uh, alarm so if there is any alarms you know it can you were so information right now we don't have anything any alarms or show packages opx uh, show packages so this one shows all the packages uh the opx uh, piece of software so this can be used for to understand what current software li libraries of the OPX is being run, or if we can, if we need to upgrade any of these uh, packages. Uh, and we got uh, show transceivers, for example. Show transceivers in sudo. Summary. So this command shows the virtualized uh, uh, 32 QSFP plus uh, 40 gigs with serial number and part number, but in real world, it will show you all the transceiver information. So actually this command, it it goes and talks to the CPLDs and, you know, gets the information of the uh, of the SFPs. It reads the EP ROM from, from, the, from the SFPs. And also, let's try OPX uh, show uh, version. So this command gives us information about what is the current version we are running, what's the platform, and you know the basic information of that. So let's do some layer two uh, testing now with with Open Switch. See how the layer two configuration will go. All right, so let's start with, uh, let's be clear the interface. Let's let's start with creating a VLAN and putting few ports inside inside the VLAN. So for doing that, we need to, we will use the command called bridge CTL. So bridge CTL is the uh, Linux bridge uh, controller. Uh, it is very similar to what we do in the OVS. It's also, you know, creates these virtual bridges or virtual switches. Now we use this command to uh, to communicate uh, with kernel about for, for creating this uh, VLANs. So let's create a new uh, VLAN or bridge uh, called for, for VLAN 100, for example. And we say add 
page uh, reach 100. So I have to do a pseudo. Okay. And if I do a bridge uh, control show, it shows me the list of I. Uh, bridges or virtual switches or the VLAN. So we got uh, we created a new VLAN called VLAN 100. Now we have to assign this uh, VLAN interfaces to that. So we can assign uh, a tagged interface or an untagged interface to to this new VLAN which we have created. So let's assign. Uh, let's start with uh, with a tag interface. So let's create uh, a tag interface. We use the IP link add link. Uh, let's, call, let's use the Ethernet 101.001-0. So that was one of our physical interfaces. So within that physical interface, it will say uh, create a new one called E101-001-0. Dot 100. So the 100 is a sub interface within that physical interface for uh, for that VLAN type. VLAN, so it's a VLAN interface with the ID of 100. And I have to do a pseudo. Okay, so we have created uh, a tag interface. So we just created a tag interface. We created a sub interface right now. We haven't added to the to the bridge now yet. Now, now we will say bridge CTL. I want to do uh, bridge bridge CTL. Add interface on on which interface? So I want to add the interface on the bridge 100, which we have created earlier. Now, what is the interface name that we are going to add? Is the new tag interface name which we created E101-001-0.100. Pseudo. Now, if I do a bridge CTL show you can see that the bridge 100 it got the new interface called e101001-0.100 so if you connect a cable to the Ethernet port 1 that 40 gigabit per second port we connect a cable to that and we connect it to another device uh, right now uh, it has a sub interface of 100 which means that that port is a uh, is a trunk interface or it can send dot one q trunk uh, dot one cube uh, frames and you know it will be sending it can send uh, the traffic for this particular vlan so it can it will be able to send frames with dot one q header with, with vlan id of 100. now let's add another port to the same bridge to the same vlan uh, an on tag port let's say on the port number two so if i do uh same command actually if i do we add the port number two, two, and now we got two interfaces. So we got uh, port number one, VLAN 100, and the full port number two on tag ports, you know, is all in the same. So if you connect uh, two devices, let's say to these two ports, the port number one and port number two, and port number one, if we have a, if you have another device which is capable of uh, sending dot one Q uh, uh frames with vlan idea 100 it will be able to communicate with the device which is connected to port 2 on our switch here so this is how we created the vlan 100 and we assigned two interfaces one tag interface and one untag interface to our to our vlan 100 here now if you look here you know spanning tree is disabled it's not enabled here let's enable the spanning tree here so we call reach ctl on stp spanning tree for bridge 100 oh sorry pseudo and if i do again show now it shows the spanning tree is enabled so we got spanning tree running now to get the more details of what spanning tree we are running we will use cctl show stp of bridge 100 and we get all the details so our bridge id and the root id for that switch or uh, the fourth id the designated port root ports all the information will be shown here so the full spanning tree is running 
and so when we enable the spanning tree here what will happen is you know it will call again to the to the hardware uh api for enabling the uh you know accelerated spanning tree on the if we got if we got a hardware based for you can do also use the lldp cdi so lldp uh, cli is a command also for you know we can use it for you know show the which right now we don't have any uh, lldp neighbors so this is another command that you know probably we know within the in layer two that you know how to use uh, how to find our neighbors now let's do some uh checking on the routing and how we can enable routing protocols uh on open switch okay so to deal with uh, the routing it's again uh basic linux command like ip route show so right now we have a default gateway 192.166.1 on internet zero which is our actually our management interface we can do uh adding static routes so ip route at let's say 5.5.5.5 slash 32 via uh, 192.168.56.1 uh, so and if i do again show ip route so, so now it shows 55555 is why this right it doesn't make sense because our default route actually is pointing the same but this is just how shows you how you can create a static route using the uh the linux uh, ip route commands um to show the ip addresses uh, of the machine also we can use uh IP address show so this shows all the interfaces and if any interface has got any IP address it will show the IP address for that interface so right now only our Ethernet zero uh, has got the interface uh, that's the only thing we have uh, nothing on the other interfaces okay now let's see how we can do the routing for um, for doing the dynamic routing running, running our BGP OSPF and the other routing protocols uh in open switch also uses frr so frr is like a standard uh package for routing in in linux and also for for these switches which we have so for for doing that uh you know if i if i can show you here and show you here that in the in the configuration guide of of open switch so for for, for doing the routing also it suggests that we have to install the frr uh routing so again the same uh, familiar pay a familiar picture that zebra communicates as a broker with other uh, routing daemons and for installation we can use the app get install uh, but we have to download the package so let's download uh, the package uh, from the frr uh, uh, let's do so in the frr website we go and download release and here we go so we got all of these packages uh what we need we need a debian package frr6 uh debian these are all debugs debug 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 devil uh there we go frr601 debian 9 plus 1 amd64 so this is the file which we need so let's copy the link location and here uh we'll download this file uh w get this I don't have any uh, DNS server. Um, sudo nano slash gc slash so. That's the easy way to do that and here we go we can download that okay uh so by the way uh the reason that my, this virtual machine is able to communicate to the internet is that uh, on my device i have i have created a netting uh for uh between the virtual interface which this device is connected i mean the virtual box is connected and my uh wireless connection so on my laptop because uh, this is a laptop running the virtual box so i have used the ip tables for doing the netting between these two interfaces that's how uh, this machine is able to access the internet so we got the frr uh downloaded and we'll do empty 
apt-get install dot slash frr and sudo. Okay, so sudo uh, it will download. So using installing it with uh, apt-get, it downloads then installs the, the dependencies. So it looks like it's installed now. And now first thing first, we need to uh, enable the zebra and uh, the other daemons which we need. So nano slash etc frr uh, daemons. Uh, here we go. So zebra, we enable zebra, and let's enable the BGP also. So we have all the other routings, routing demand demons, and we don't need any any of them. Save this and system CTL. We can enable FRR, and we will uh, restart or start FRR. Now we should have access to V2YSH. Yeah. So we got access to the uh, V2YSH. This is our uh, routing and it shows all the interfaces. And from here, we can also do the configuration of uh, router BGP65000, for example, and uh, can configure some neighbors. Uh, 65,000 and right ma'am yeah so so here I don't have actually any device connected to this but we could establish some uh, some BGP uh, neighborship with another device probably and if we exit from here all of these configurations are saved inside our bgp daemon and so when the zebra is running and all of these other routing daemons are running whatever happens you know this the, the other daemons you know you know for example the bgp daemon bgp daemon communicates with other bgp neighbors it downloads the uh, it receives the bgp prefixes from the others and it chooses which one is the correct prefix that has to get installed in the routing table and it will get delivered or handed over to Zebra. So Zebra will deal with the routing table. Now here we got uh, a piece of the OPS which gets those whatever changes are happening in the routing table. It injects those route inside the real switch, the hardware routing table. So that's how the uh, the switch operates. So we have the Linux shell, uh, the, the Linux and you know all of these uh, software components that are running. Whatever happens in the routing table and other pieces you know other other parts like you know whenever we create this uh, uh, bridge you know with with bridge ctl command or we assign IPRS, all of those commands will get uh, injected inside our uh, or the uh, inside the asic inside the uh, switch hardware so uh, i suggest also if you uh, if you get some time you can you can try also cumulus linux uh, they got also a testing machine and uh, Cumulus Linux is very similar to this, but they got uh, a, a, a command called net. So it's uh, with the net command, you can do everything in one single command. So net, uh, you can configure IP addresses, you can configure your routing, you can do almost everything with one single command. So initially, Cumulus also was like this, but you know now it's much more matured and it has uh, many of these you know type of additional uh you know tools to make the life much easier when we are working on uh, this open open networking and disaggregated switches now one of the best things of you know this type of operating systems is that you know it's just pure linux so you can install your puppet agent or anything else your 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 choice of the devops or automation tools and you can just manage everything through the uh, through a DevOps uh, DevOps tool. So any any changes on the you know IP addresses or you know uh, a configuration, a dynamic kind of configuration that you know it changes based on the application requirement. All of this this stuff can be implemented using the uh, using the automation tools. So it's very very flexible and uh, automation friendly. Uh, type of operating system unlike the other uh, traditional operating system so this was about our uh, open switch unfortunately I didn't have a, a compatible hardware so the the hardware which I have is not compatible with open switch uh, it doesn't work 
and but you know it's a good choice to use the uh, a virtual machine and do everything on the virtual machine and test you can also try it with with your uh, with your virtual box and operating and load the uh, open switch operating system uh, if you have any question please feel free to uh, raise in the forum or you can contact me directly thank you very much